Hey everybody, it's Mark. I hope you're doing great today. Hey, uh, hard to believe it, uh, but I guess yesterday was the uh, 10th anniversary of the release of Forget Not Slow Down, uh, which is a Reliant K album that's really near and dear to my heart. Um, I, th I thought I'd go ahead and just for the heck of it, I'd share a couple thoughts and then I actually am going to open up one of the songs and take you through some of the tracks uh, and kind of give you a behind the scenes look at how we did some things. So um, Forget Not Slow Down, it's interesting because Clearly, when you look at the the lyrics, uh, Matt, I think, uh, was definitely going through a breakup of a relationship at that point in time, and and so a lot of the songs reflected that. But but the weird thing about it is, it wasn't a heavy album to make, and what I mean is, it wasn't a heavy, um, uh, dark, emotional album. And in in the studio, it, it actually was one of the more fun records that we had worked on. There there was kind of a lightheartedness for the heaviness of the subject matter. Um, and uh, Ethan and, and, and everybody in the cast just really brought a, um, a great, uh, some really great musical ideas to the table. Um, and it, it just, uh, there was just a good overall vibe on the whole thing top to bottom. It took us several months to make because we had started it um, before the summer. And then during the summer, RK was doing a bunch of touring. And uh, Matt's voice was kind of sketchy throughout the summer. He, he had been kind of battling, I think, some throat fatigue. Uh, that leads to another story, which I'll share in a second. And then uh, I believe we finished it up uh, towards the end of the summer. Uh, but it, yeah, it was just a great experience overall, considering the uh, the subject matter of the album is, is so heavy and in and, and some dark in areas, light in others, I guess you should, uh, could say. So um, one thing I will share on this that shows the brilliance of Matt Heeson is that we were, as I said, we started this record and on the front of it, he had clearly in his mind sung these songs many times over or he came really prepared in the studio. I don't know so much as far as exact instrumentation or arrangements, but, but clearly in his head, he had, you know, knew the songs well, uh, melody wise and lyric wise. So what we did is in order to show the record company in New York at the time, they were d doing a meeting um, on the front of the summer. So we decided, hey, w we had tracks at that point. We had no vocals and said, okay, Matt, let's throw down some guide vocals. Let's just throw down a one pass quick guide vocal on each of these songs. And um, just so, and what I'll do, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll snug up, up, up a little bit with editing and then uh, I'll do some quick mixes of this stuff and you can take it to New York and, and have something to play for record execs, knowing it's not the final product. So anyhow, that's what I did. I basically set up a really good mic and a really good preamp and uh, compressor chain. And I just had Matt sing these songs down. And I said, if we, if we blew a word or, you know, blew a line, we just punched it real fast. But so anyhow, he did that real quick. We did it, I think, in one day. I think we literally blew all, through all the songs. And as Matt was doing this, I knew that he was nailing it. <laughs> the, he, 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 was, he knew the songs, he knew the melodies, but he was riffing. He was just into being creative and doing his thing. And in the back of my mind, I was going, this is going to be really tough to beat. And I know Matt doesn't want to hear it because every vocalist thinks they have a better take in them. Every one of them does. Uh, but in the back of my mind, I knew that, yeah, you're going to have a rough time beating this. This is really good. So we did it. I went ahead, edited them, you know, just snugged in a few notes here and there with editing and just a little timing here and there, but not not a lot. Mixed these songs, sent them off to New York. So they go out on tour. They're out off and on for a couple, you know, a couple months through the summer. Come back, Matt. I'm ready to cut vocals. Okay, cool. Uh, once again, in the back of my mind, you're gonna have a rough time beating this, and I think I even told him that. Um, and of course, Matt didn't want to hear that. I understand that. Uh, so Matt went ahead and knocked down another vocal and I go, Matt, we took one of the songs and it's like, Matt, you did great. It's not better than what you did on your guide vocal. What? That's impossible. No, it isn't impossible. It's the John Lennon syndrome. John Lennon was a guy that riffed off the top of his head and you know, George Martin typically tried to get him in one or two takes, period. When he was making music, he wasn't thinking. He, he was being creative. And uh, this was sort of the same way with Matt on this record. And sure enough, we A-beat him, and it was like, okay, what Matt did on the, on the second pass in the fall with a really great voice was good. It didn't have the vibe. It didn't have that magic. 
And we literally started going through songs, recutting a vocal, and then we'd go back and go, it's great, but it it, it didn't beat the guide vocal. So long story to sh uh, short on that is 85% of the lead vocals that you hear on Forget or Not Slow Down were the guide takes. They weren't even a master take. Um, and we captured it and it was great. And if he changed the lyric here, then we just punch a lyric. That's it. We just punch one word or, or maybe just a tiny phrase, but seriously, 85% of that record lead vocals are the guide vocal on one pass. So, and I'm really proud of Matt for that. I think he probably hates me to this day for pointing out that it was just what he did was great and it didn't need improved upon. Uh, I am kidding. He doesn't hate me, but, uh, but yeah, it was just one of those things that worked out really well. So anyhow, uh, yeah, just great. The, the whole gang, J uh, John Schneck, John Warren, everybody hoops. It, it was just a really great vibe on the record. Uh, it was real relaxed on the feel, and it, and it went really well. So anyhow, uh, I'm going to go ahead and open a song. I'm going to open Savannah, and, and it's been a, a while since this has been opened up, so it's literally just raw tracks. I don't have a... I, this isn't a mix remotely. It's just I'm going to solo up some little sections so you can see some of the instruments that we use and some of the things we did. Um, Andy Wallace mixed this record, did a great job uh, up in New York. He mixed it on an SSL 9000, I believe it was. I don't think he used a bunch of out, outboard gear. Um, and... He just did a great balance mix, uh, which is exactly what we wanted uh, on this whole thing. So anyhow, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and open into Savannah. So uh, come along for the ride here. Um, on the front of this, it was all, uh, a lot of it was just sticks and uh, drumsticks, baseball bats, things like that, just percussive little things. So here, I'm going to start this up. We got the nylon guitar here. Okay, double with cello, instantly recognizable, okay? I took the lead vocal out for the moment just so you can hear some of the percussion things. That's a trash can lid there, claves, ah, what is that? We were hitting on something, another thing. Might have been a trash kit there. Uh, full drum kit here, along with sticks. Uh, I believe Ethan was playing rims on the top, okay? All right. Of course, we've got our, uh, our tambourine with a lot of room sound. That's natural room sound. That's not a reverb. That side sticks again. It's run through a tape echo that I have, an old rolling tape echo. That's the solo nylon string there. Okay. Okay. More toms, layered and overdub. Uh, there's acoustics. Big electric guitars. That's only two, but they're really big sound, which is great. Uh, let's see what else we got coming up here. Mandolins. A whole gang of tremolo mandolins. Big bass run through two guitar amps, a Sans amp and a DI. That's a P bass. Oh, right there, I want you to hear the trash cans. Just beating the snot out of metal trash cans. <laughs> you can hear the ring. No, you hear a big one here. Uh, let's see here. Actually, one second. You're going to hear a big t a big tom tom uh, that is run through a tape echo that we dubbed on the very end of that line before it goes to the bridge. Come in here in just a second. There... Man, where are we at here? 
Whoops, the tom is right here. That's why we're slapping then. Big floor tom through a tape echo with reverb on it. Okay, and then I'm going to bring in Matt's vocal here a little bit just as we move on into this, into the bridge. Just a little section of the Makes sense when you're with me. What's really awesome, a guy named Chris Carmichael up in uh, uh, Bowling Green, Kentucky did the strings. He did it all himself. He is a brilliant multi-instrumentalist and, and just uh, really did exactly what we needed. Love that guitar sound. That's hoops. With delay. We got our mandolins back. They're flipping parts. Flipping between the melody and the low harmony. Single solo nylon string guitar. It's an old Giannini from the 1960s that I have, and it sounds awesome. It's there you go. Isn't that crazy? Just a, a absolutely amazing uh, piece of music. And uh, uh, it's said, hard to believe it's been 10 years, but just a great record. I was absolutely honored to be a part of it as, as with the rest of the Reliant K catalog I've worked on through the years uh, where, where I've been able to do that. And uh, just great music. And yeah, 10 years. Hopefully, uh, one of these days, this music will be out live again and kicking. So, uh, in the meantime, up to the fans. Keep playing the music. Have a great day. Take care.